Welcome back. Last time we got our signs in and displaying text. Now we need to actually make the second version of the sign where it will reset when the player hits it. That way we can reset the puzzles on the level that they're on. The first thing we're going to want to do actually is make a new layout. So what we're going to do is go over to layouts over here and we are going to right click, add new layout. And let's go ahead and just make it layout only. And we can go ahead and rename this to HUD. So what we want to do first is let's go ahead. I'm going to grab the default size of our window, which is 320 by 180. Go back down to HUD. Come on over to the size and go ahead and paste that in. So now the size of the HUD is actually the same size as our viewport. It has no event sheet. That's perfectly fine. What we want to do now is go to layer zero. We will come over, make sure we check transparent because we definitely want this background to be transparent since this will be overlaying everything else we see. And we're going to make a couple of layers here. So the first layer we're going to make, actually we're just going to make one now. We'll add the others as we go. The first layer we need is fade. And what we want to do on fade is come over to the properties where it says global. We're going to make that yes. Then we're going to come down to scroll and zoom. We're going to make scale rate zero and we will make parallax zero and zero. Okay, so at the moment, this is now just an independent layer on a separate layout. If we go back to our actual game layout, we can go ahead and come over to our layers, right click, add layer to top, and we're going to call this fade. Make sure you spell it the same, capitals do matter, as you have in the other layout, in the other layer we just made. And as you can see over here where it says global, this says overridden, which means anything we do to this HUD layer will be displayed on this fade layer. Let's go ahead and make a couple new sprites. OK, so we're going to go ahead and make a new sprite. We will double click, come on down to Sprite, and we will call this Fader. We will click, and let's go ahead and fill this with black at full alpha, so 255 on the alpha. Good, and we can leave this at the size it is. So it's going to be rather large which is fine, that's what we want. We're gonna go ahead and drag this over the entirety of the layer. And then we're gonna go over to Behavior, New Behavior, and we're gonna scroll down to Tween. Go ahead and click Add. So now what we wanna have happen is when we load a layer, we want to have this fader basically fade in opacity to zero. So we're gonna to go to Game, On Start of Layout, Add Action, System, wait let's go ahead and wait 0 0.5 just for a moment so we can see how it looks we will add action and we will go to fader scroll on down to tween one property tag will be fade in because we are fading into the scene the property will be tweening will be opacity end value will be zero and the time it should take should, well, let's go ahead and make it 0 0.5 as well and we'll make it linear. So let's go ahead and click done and let's test it and see if this actually works. As you can see on our actual game layout now, we see that fade has taken over because it is all right here. I find it's easiest with the fade layer. I just lock it and turn it off because everything's handled on another layout so we don't need to worry about it here. Let's go ahead and save and let's test it out. Perfect. That's exactly how we want that to work. So we can go ahead and close this now. We will do the fade out in just a moment. First up, we got to start working on the sign. So let's go ahead and choose this sign here. We will come down on the properties panel and change its initial animation, change, or sorry, initial frame to frame one. That will set it up as a reset sign. Now in our actual sign copy, we can go ahead and come on over here, go down. I like to make mine on 4.4. Four. You can Choose this wherever you want. I just find it's easier to put it at the very end. I will put down hit to reset level. Okay, now if we come back over to game, we just want to make sure that we assign this sign's text to that space. So that is in four and four. Let's go ahead and save and let's just double check, make sure it works. I like to do a lot of double checking. That way I know things work before I move on to the next step. So hit to reset level, perfect. Right now it obviously doesn't work. What we're going to do is come into eGame now, scroll on down, let's open up signs. And right now it is checking to see if the player is overlapping signs. That's all good, so that just shows our text. So we're going to select the group, hit B for a new blank sub event, double click. We are going to come down to 
attack box, not down. It's right there at the beginning. I <laughs> just couldn't find it. So we will double click on attack box, come down to is overlapping another object, and we will check to see if it's overlapping the signpost. Done. Now we will hit C to add another condition, and we want to check to make sure that the signpost, we are going to check the frame that it is on. If the frame is equal to 1, which is our reset sign frame, we want it to do something. If it doesn't, it'll completely ignore it and it's fine. If the attack box is overlapping the sign and its animation is 1, now we want to reset the layout. So all we really have to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and grab the tween that we added up here to our fader. Um, hold down control, drag it on down, double click. We're going to change its name to fade out because now we are fading out of the level. It's fading the opacity and its end value will be 100. Let's go ahead and add a system weight. We will wait for 0.5 seconds. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead, since the actual fade out is 5 seconds, 0.5 seconds, let's go ahead and make it 0.7, just to give it a little bit of buffer once the screen goes fully black. Then all we have to do is add an action. I misclicked right there. Add action, system, and go ahead and do restart layout. So what this should let us do, let's see if it actually works, is we can run around and move objects. So we can hit that rock, break that bush. If we come up to the reset sign and hit it, we will now fade out and we reset the whole layout, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Do one more time, make sure it works. Excellent. Now I'm able to move during the transitions and I don't want that to happen. So if you see right here, you can kind of see the player. If I hit it and start running right away, you can see that I'm moving during both the fade in and fade out. So what we're going to want to do is actually disable movement during those times. So let's go ahead and go back to eGame. Let's start with the fade out. So down here where we are setting the tween to fade out for the fader, we will add an action, system, set, group, active. And the group we want to deactivate will be our player movement. So inside of the quotes, we just need to make sure we spell it the same with the same capitalization, player movement. We will deactivate that. Let's go ahead and drag this up so it happens right as the attack overlaps. Okay, so that's fine on fade out, but on fade in, I can still move around and that's not what I want either. So we'll go ahead and select the deactivating player movement group, hold control, drag it all the way up to the very top or not the very top, but right, actually, yes, the very top before the Ajax call. Then we will hold control and drag out another copy of it down below fader, and we will set this to activated. Let's go ahead and hit save, and let's see if this actually works. Okay, so it didn't seem like I could move there, so reset, try and move, can't move. And on reset, we are moving, perfect. Now, the one issue I do have here is what I wanted to have happen when you reset the layout, is if I put the reset sign over here. I want you to respawn in front of the sign when the layout reloads. But as it stands at the moment, it resets the whole layout and moves the player back to the original starting location. So that's something we're going to need to change. The easiest way to do that, I've found, is to go back to eGame and we're going to make two global variables. So you can go ahead, just make sure you have nothing selected, hit V on the keyboard. We will name the first variable spawn x and it will be a number then hit v again and we will have spawn y that will also be a number all right to go along with adding spawn point x and spawn point y we actually want to make a couple of more changes i usually like to have just a generic player spawner that spawns in the player as opposed to using the boxes um, the same way i like to have the animations on a separate object layout as well so we're going to go ahead and add that. So let's go ahead, lock all layers except player. Make sure you have player selected. We will double click. Come on down to sprite, new sprite. And let's just call this player underscore spawner. Insert, click it. And let's go ahead, make it 16 by 16. Uh, put whatever color you like. Generally for these kind of system or these kind of things, I use a hot pink and then Personally, I usually just draw a thing on it so I know what it is. So I put a PS on the player spawner and let's go ahead and make sure our origin point is in the top left. Uh, that's on dark again, so you can see there. Okay, so we can go ahead and close this. 
Now this is our new player spawner. So we can go ahead, grab the player box, hit Control X or Command X if you're on a Mac, head on over to Object and Control V to paste it. So now it's over here. So at the moment we kind of have a problem. Now we have no way of having our player on the game. So let's go ahead and set that up. We're going to change a bunch of things here. The first thing we're going to do is actually add our first function. So we will right click, add function. This function will be called spawn player for the description. Spawn player set position category. Let's go ahead and just make it player and we can go ahead and click OK. We will have no return type. So now that we have this function in, we need to give it two variables. So we will right click and add parameter. This parameter will be X. It will be a number. One more parameter. This will be Y. OK. OK, so now all we need to do is spawn in the player. So first thing we're going to do is add an action. Go to System, Create Object. The object we will create will be the player box on layer player. And the X will be at the parameter X. Now with the way functions work in construct three, these parameters work like local variables. So you can actually call them the same way you would a global variable. So I can actually go ahead and just type in X here and see it as a variable that I can grab. So in X and Y. So we will call this function passing in the position we want it to actually spawn at. Now we can go ahead and pretty much do everything else the same. So let's come on up and we're going to grab player box, pin, or where the player box is spawning in the art, where it pins the art, where it spawns the shadow, where it pins the shadow, and moves the shadow down to the shadow layer. Let's go ahead and grab all of that. Command X to cut it out. Scroll on down. Go on and down, and we're going to paste this underneath the creating of player box. So now it should create the player box, and the whole chain will cycle. We could make this all a container and make this a little easier, but since we have this set up here, it's just another way of doing it as opposed to using containers. So you can feel free to do that however you like. But now we need a way to actually set where that X and Y is. So let's go on up, and we also don't have anywhere up here that we're actually calling the function. So what we want to do is on start of layout, we're going to go ahead and create a new blank sub event. So grab start of layout B for a new blank sub event. And we need to make a check real fast. So the first thing we're going to check is whether spawn X and Y are zero or not. So we will double click system compare variable spawn point X is equal to zero. Uh, go ahead and select just the condition here. Control C, Control V, double click, spawn Y is equal to zero. So if both of these are equal to zero, we are going to want to add an action, function. We're going to call the function of spawn player, spawn player, and we are going to want to spawn the player at our player spawner object we made. So we will start typing in player spawner. Go ahead and select it, dot X, player spawner, dot Y and then add an action, player spawner, and we will destroy it. We will just use it for its position and then destroy it because the player is going to be spawned in that location. Now, if spawn X and Y are not zero, which they will be at the default on the start of the first time you run the layout, let's go ahead and hit X. We'll go ahead and select both of these options, drag them down, and we will call player spawner, but instead of having X and Y be the player spawners X and Y, we will have them be the global variables of spawn X and spawn Y. So spawn X, spawn Y. And we're still going to destroy the player spawner. The last thing that we don't have is a way to set spawn X and spawn Y currently. So what we're going to want to do is scroll down to our signs group. In here where we have attack box is overlapping sign and the animation frame is one. This is setting up for reset sign. Let's go ahead, hit Q and just do reset sign just so we have a better marker of where we're at that's just a comment again let's go ahead and add an action system set value spawn x and we will set it to player box dot x and copy paste we're going to do the same thing but we're going to change this to spawn y and change it to player box dot y done now select both of those and drag them up after 
the player movement group is deactivated, but before it starts fading out. So now everything should be all good. The last thing I want to do, though, is we need to make sure that everything gets reset. So there is a little bit of an issue when we reset the layout. It resets almost everything except the global variables. But what that does reset is player animation and all of those directions and titles. So those all go back to being nothing. So we're just going to add in a default. We're also going to make sure that all of the player's instance variables are set to false right away when it spawns in. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to grab them from right here. So I'm at player inputs. I'm just going to grab all these where it says false, hold down control. Just drag it on down and we'll go ahead and put this in after everything is spawned in. I also want to set attack to false so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste one of the last ones, double click and make attack false. And then the very last thing we want to do is for the player animation what we want to do is add action, player art, come on down to set value and for anim let's go ahead and just set it to idle. So we spawn in in the idle pose, add action, player art, scroll on down to set value, direction, and we will set it to down. That way when it restarts, the player is always facing us. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's go ahead and save game. Let's hit play. So when we start the layout, we spawn where the player spawner was and it disappeared. Let's come on over and hit the reset sign. We are now spawned in front of the reset sign and we can move around. So let me hit it one more time. And the way I had an issue before was attacking right away. Good. Nothing has an issue. And we respawn over there permanently now.